So much to sort through from the weekend, especially those surprising losses yesterday. If you were like me, you, you watched these two talk about it yesterday. And really, you two were really dealing with the initial shock. We've had a day, and mm -hmm. a lot of times more perspective comes with those 24 hours, uh, Robbie Musto. This question that's hanging around for everybody who follows the Premier League, is it over now? Uh, no, it's not over. It's not over. We now have a firm favourite. So over the last few weeks and probably a couple of months, people like us have been saying it's so tight, it's difficult to call. And now it's a lot easier to call. Um, strong favourites. I think I saw some 70 percent, some stats were saying that. Um, but anyway, I, I think what we saw this weekend is is what the Premier League is right now. And we, Paul, at the moment have an extraordinary football team playing in English football, trying to do something unprecedented trying to win four Premier League titles on the spin. Never been done at the top level, so we're going back into to forever in English football. And when you see the reaction there of the Liverpool manager, the Arsenal manager, kind of hinting at this, said, we've had an incredible run. We, 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 we now lose a game this first since uh, New Year's Eve, I believe, and they're up against it. it. It's just the squad of Man City and the way that they can chop and change and change a team. Every team they put out is an excellent team an excellent team and that has always been the issue or their strength they've got it again Pep's a master at rotating bringing people in and out for different competitions so every single match day they're in great shape and the other two you know they've just got to find a way to stay with it because there are some games left and City don't all are not always perfect but they have fewer bad days than the others um, but the, the, this Man City set up with this manager is outstanding. I think Musty's got something to say about that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I was to answer the question, um, I'd say the title race isn't over, but it feels like it is. Mm. And it feels like it is exactly what Musty said, because Manchester City are sitting top of the pile, and Manchester City are so good. We talked on, on our podcast yesterday, and you know, Musty was talking about the quality of player and changing. But there's another thing, there's other elements. There, there's a culture and an environment around that football club. There's a hunger that's still there despite what, they, what they've won. And there's a muscle memory. And springtime is city time. They're at the top of the table where they want to be right now with six games to go. And that's exactly what Pep does season after season. You go back and look through the records. This time of year, they find the top and they, they push on. And everybody else has to almost be perfect if you're going to beat Manchester City to the title. And that pressure of needing to be perfect right. starts to weigh heavy, as we saw on Arsenal, as we saw on Liverpool. It I'm just Robbie. saying it's crazy because up to this point, if you're a Liverpool fan or an Arsenal fan, you can shout at the TV and say, well, what about up to this point? We have stayed with City. We've been ahead of the, We've been leading this league table. It's something about the run-in that whether you're Mikel Arteta and you make a few changes for the game at the weekend, that you didn't have your best team right. that you did against Bayern Munich in the Champions League, you made the rotations like Pep does, but maybe Arsenal quite haven't got that squad depth that City have and, and will he have regrets of changing team? I don't know. Liverpool's a little bit different. The mm, chances right. that were missed that we just yeah, showed in those highlights absolutely. were incredible, the amount of chances missed. And it feels like, you know, Erlen Haaland, 20 goals. Like, and others that score plenty of goals as well. It's just tough to compete against that. I'll tell you what stands out to me is really the tone uh, from all, all the fans, all of us that yeah. follow us so yeah. closely. Mm -hmm. When it was one point separating these two, there's so much excitement. Yeah. Anybody yeah. could win. There yeah. was that feeling. Now that yeah. it's City on top, with only two points separating. Now it's like, it's doom. And, and everybody's starting to look. So we're looking now at weaknesses from Liverpool. They didn't take their chances. You know, 21 games now this season have conceded the first goal. For Arsenal, we're saying they tightened up. It looked to me like it's the first time they've been in the spotlight and they didn't like it. Right. They tightened up in that second half. So we're all looking at, at the flaws in, in the other two and we're all looking at the positive things now for Manchester City. Let's go ahead and take a look at, as we're thinking about these top three, the specifics of what they have coming up. Six games to go in the title race. Man City, they don't play next weekend because of the FA Cup semifinals. Their final opponents in the Premier League this season, Brighton, Forest, Wolves, Fulham, Tottenham and West Ham. Moving on to Arsenal, they have Wolves, then Chelsea, Tottenham, Bournemouth, Man United, and Everton. Finally, Liverpool, they still have Fulham, Everton, West Ham, Tottenham, Aston Villa, and Wolves. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.